Disclaimer, I am not a medical professional and I'm not trying to give out medical advice. I'm sharing what I've learned in the adult film industry when it comes to preparing for bottoming, particularly with a bowel condition. This video is educational, content warning. There will be mention of bodily waste and parts of the human anatomy related to waste and reproduction. If you are sensitive to these topics, please click away. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what I've learned when it comes to bottoming with a bowel condition. For myself, I've been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome, which means that my bowels, particularly in the lower intestines, are very sensitive to all sorts of foods, usually things that don't bother other people. Mine leans more towards diarrhea, so everything just goes way too fast. In this video, with regards to cleaning yourself out, also known as douching, the most important thing is that you need to get to know how your body works. Is your metabolism fast or slow? Are you sensitive to certain foods and not to others? Uh, how do you respond when you eat a lot of cheese? Is it different for hard or soft cheeses? And how does your body respond to an enema? It's important to test all of these things out for yourself before you actually implement them. When it comes to equipment, I've tried out a lot of different things and I've settled on what works for me but I urge viewers to find what works for them. In my work in the adult film industry, I bottom more often. And when I do bottom, it often is for very large men. So I need to make sure I'm cleaned out very thoroughly, particularly because my inner sphincter, which is what caps off the sigmoid colon, which you have the end on the outside, the anus, and then um, the inner sphincter. And that one, also known as the second ring, is fairly shallow in my body, so many men will often reach it. I often can reach it with one of my fingers. So let's dive right in and talk about diet. So there are a few things that I would avoid for anyone, and that is fast food. It often is way too salty and greasy and your body is not gonna process it very well. I also tend to avoid leftovers because in the reheating process, it's more likely for bacteria or any sort of other thing in it to survive or for something in the food to have gone bad and for you to not be aware of it. I also typically will avoid heavily processed carbs. I typically won't eat white bread, uh, but I will eat homemade sourdough or just most homemade bread. I also typically try to avoid anything that's really high in fat. Fat often can make things kind of slow down, which can be good, but it also can make things very slimy. Something very important for most people is to avoid spicy food. That, at least for me, since my bowels are very sensitive, can stimulate things and get it to go way faster than it needs to. It also can be uncomfortable when it's all coming out. I also typically will avoid softer forms of cheese and some forms of dairy. Milk is typically fine for me. Uh, my preference is for fat-free or 1%, but soft cheeses tend to work through me a little bit faster than they should or make things very soft which is harder to clean out the final and i believe the most important thing to avoid is anything heavy in sugar fruit is great but eating a lot of it when you're planning on bottoming can often get in the way sugar causes inflammation and when your intestines are inflamed they overreact to things and they push things out a lot more than they should it creates a lot of discomfort a lot of these foods can cause that discomfort and inflammation as well as bloating. And not only does that not look and feel great, but when you're cleaning out, it can become a problem because it pushes more things out than you want it to. With all of these foods, it's a best to start implementing this about two to three days in advance, but it does depend on your metabolism. My metabolism is very fast, but my body adjusts a little bit slowly. So I always start two or three days in advance, as well as for some of the other things I'm about to talk about. Now, for foods that are good for you, complex carbs are wonderful, a lot of good fibers. Of course, you don't want too much fiber or it's gonna push everything out a little bit too much. It can cause diarrhea and discomfort. And for me, hard cheeses work very well. A lot of people say when you eat a lot of dairy, it can stop you up, but those hard cheeses have a little bit less water and sometimes they have less fat as well. And for me, it slows things down in a good way. This is very dependent on your body, and I highly recommend trying it out to see what it does for you. 
now on to other more chemical things that I ingest that help. Alkaline water, for me, helps slow things down and calm my digestive system. I have a particularly acidic environment in my bowels, but alkaline water helps balance that out. And for me, it's helped ease diarrhea and make things just run a little bit more smoothly, a little bit slower as they're supposed to. I often used to go to the bathroom up to six times a day just to defecate. And I've cut that down to two or three, sometimes four, with the use of alkaline water. Now, specifically when it comes to bottoming, two days beforehand, I start to take some antidiarrheal. Uh, the brand name is Imodium, but it's loperamide hydrochloride, and it binds to receptors in your intestines, particularly the large and small intestine, that stop convulsions. This allows your intestines to pull out more water and more salt to make things more solid, and solids come out a lot more easy than liquids. So with loperamide, I typically will take one two days before, uh, one in the morning and one in the evening the day before, and then the day of, I'll take one in the morning. And then if I'm bottoming before, say 3 or 4 p.m., um, that one in the morning will be my last one. But if it's in the afternoon, I likely will eat something that day just to keep my energy up and then take another one when I begin the cleaning out process. This helps slow and stop everything so that way it comes out a lot more easy, a lot more solid. Something else I've recently started implementing, and this may be surprising, is taking a laxative the night before. Mine of choice is milk of magnesia. It's very gentle on the stomach. It's fairly neutral pasting. It doesn't cause any sort of gas or bloating. Magnesium also is alkaline, so it works along with the alkaline water. It may seem counterintuitive, but when you take it six to eight hours before your bottoming, so really just the night before to ensure it works its magic, it helps clear things out. So you're starting with a clean slate rather than being stopped up. Many people don't know this, but you can be constipated and have diarrhea at the same time. With this, you'll have diarrhea, but it'll take multiple trips to the restroom to get it all out, two or three, because it's just stuck up in there. Your intestines don't want to let it go, even though it is loose. So this stops that, it clears out everything, and you just can start a little bit more easy. Next, I want to talk about equipment. I'll describe what I use and how I use it, and then I'll show you, so that way if you don't want to see these items, you can skip right over it. First is the actual water spout itself. There's two main schools of thought on this. Using a shower shot, which is an attachment that you screw into a shower head and you just insert in the shower, um, and it's just a steady flow based on how high you have the water. This is dependent on your water pressure in your shower, the head of the nozzle, because there's a lot of different ones. You can get metal or glass, you can get different shapes. Um, you also can get silicone ones or all sorts of things. There's a lot out there. The advantages to this are that it's a lot easier to clean up because it's all in the shower. You can just get a nice bleach spray and spray everything off when you're done to ensure that there's no harmful bacteria or anything lingering. The con to this mainly is that you can't see how much water you're putting into yourself. When you put a lot in there, it often will go past that second sphincter and loosen things up so it just is a barrage of water coming out. I've had times where I'll be using this and it just keeps coming and going and coming and going. But that's because my intestines are very sensitive. Taking the Imodium as I've described and taking the laxative do help this to some degree but a shower shot is not my preferred method. What I use typically is a bulb. These enema bulbs you can purchase at all sorts of drug stores, but they typically are filled with a saline laxative. So if you're gonna use it, be very wary because it'll keep things going. If you take an laxative ahead of time, this can also be harmful because it can cause convulsions that are very uncomfortable. Typically an enema bulb is not very big, larger than a turkey baster, but you'll see in a minute. And there's different sizes of nozzles that you can attach to go deeper or more shallow. This is my preferred method because it's portable and it's easier to control exactly how much fluid you're putting up inside yourself. I don't have a shower shot, so I can't quite show you what it looks like. But if you just look it up online, it'll come right up. An enema bulb, however, mine is uh, this. They're typically around this size. Some are clear, some are not. They're fairly soft, um, spray air out of them, and I have two different nozzles. I prefer the white ones because they're easier to see and easier to clean. I always disinfect all my equipment when I'm done with it. 
Next, we get on to the tool to physically and manually clean things out without liquid. Um, the objects of choice are toys, such as dildos and vibrators and butt plugs. Um, something I recently discovered that's a type of pump and your fingers. This may be gross, but it does help show what's going to happen when you actually have a physical object pushed inside there. Water behaves very differently in your bowels than an actual physical solid object. So a dildo or a vibrator. The advantage to those is that they can easily replicate the size of a penis that could be going inside you and the motion of it. You also have a lot of control over it. This, however, should probably be done in the shower in case anything does come out. I mean, you can put a towel down, but for cleanup, it's easier to just do it in the shower. Fingers, however, you can really feel what's going on in there. And if you don't want to hear anything gross, skip ahead maybe 15 seconds. But with uh, your fingers, you can put, a bit, put them in there and find if, out if there's any fecal matter and possibly even pull it out. It does help and it does let you know where you are. As I mentioned earlier, you want to clean everything very thoroughly with soap and disinfectant. Moving on, for the pump I have, it has three ridges and some hooks on the outside so it doesn't all go inside, and a pump like a blood pressure cuff. You uh, inflate it just a little bit so it's more rigid, insert it, and then um, pump it, and the tip expands. When this comes out, it helps hold open more of your bowel to let things in there fall out. You can think of it as if you put um, your hand inside of something like this and then made a fist. It has a larger area, so when you pull it out, it opens things up and lets things fall through. First, we have a dildo. I prefer something fairly large because it helps warm you up for whatever is going inside you. I also am a little bit of a size queen, so I like them bigger. Uh, this one is nice because it is fairly realistic looking. It has the ridge along the head, it has veins, it has balls also with ridges, and it has a suction cup so you can stick it to the shower wall. Uh, and because it's clear, you can see fairly easily if there's anything on it. It also has a nice pliability to it, so that way it's not too uncomfortable. And it is a little bit more rigid than I may like, but it's realistic. This one also is quite long. It's longer than my hand, so it definitely will reach the second sphincter, and it will ensure that whatever is in there is being brought to light. Next, as I mentioned, you have your hands. Your hand size does change this, but usually it's relative to your body, so it should be nice. It's a great way to warm up because you can start small with one, move up to however many you need. You can feel things much more thoroughly, and you can feel much smaller particulates. There may be something that you can barely see on a toy, but if it's on your hand, you can feel it. Moving on, we have the pump I mentioned. This one I actually uh, got from Amazon. A uh, seller contacted me. They wanted me to try it out. It's very soft silicone, and as I mentioned, it's almost like a blood pressure cup. So it naturally it has a little bit of slack in it, so I'll give it a pump or two, you know, get it nice and rigid so I actually can push it up in there. It takes a lot of lube, and I'll typically go this way with these going on the top and bottom of my crack. So you put it in, you want to get it all the way, and it is fairly long. It's not quite as long as my hand, but it can almost reach your second sphincter, but it absolutely will clean things out. Um, and I'll count the pumps to show you how big it can get so you can understand. You have one, two, three, four, five. This is typically where I stop, and it may seem fairly large considering you haven't warmed up to that size, but it's soft. Your body can squeeze it out. I often will go six. I've never gone beyond that because this is plenty big. And then once you take it out, you just twist this a little bit, and you can hear. Oh. It drains, and you're all good to go again. Um, and then you can just clean it off and do more rounds as needed. This I always will do in the shower. And it has helped quite a lot in figuring out if I'm clean or not. Finally, we have the method. So I have these two. The shorter one I typically will start with. I'll do a shallow wash, let it um, sit for a minute, and then sit on the toilet, relax, let it all come out. Then I'll do a deeper one. You always want to use lube if you're putting anything inside yourself. This one always goes into my second sphincter. It sprays out from all sides. Um, I'll push that in there. Sometimes I'll even do this on top of that to clean out more shallow and deep at the same time. Let it sit for a few minutes, get on the toilet, and relax and let it all out. If the penis that's going inside you is 
not particularly large, and your second sphincter is not very shallow, you really don't need to worry about cleaning out so deep. It's especially aggressive if you have any sort of bowel condition. When I do insert these, I'll either put one leg up and put this underneath, or I'll squat down on top of it. It may be a little bit uncomfortable, but it does work. Depending on how that's coming out, um, sometimes one or two squirts and it comes out clear, you're all good. Uh, for me though, I typically need a little bit longer and I'll do another shallow one again and then I like to wait a few minutes, let things settle, see what's happening. This I then will repeat based on whether or not I'm done. And you know you're done when the water comes out clear. There may be some particulates floating in it and those can go from fairly clear to like a milky white to a brownish color. This is mucosal lining from your intestines and it can get stained if your feces are very loose or watery. If it is coming out with the clear mucosal lining or the milky white mucosal lining, you're perfectly good. And often near the end of cleaning out, you can wait a little bit and some of that will come out on its own. This entire process is highly variable and based on how you feel and what you need. You may only need to go shallow a few more times after the first round, or you may need to go deeper twice in a row just to be sure. You may want to use something physical such as a toy to go deeper in there in between every single one, but I highly recommend for the first round going shallow, deeper, shallow, something manual. And you can do all of this in the shower. You can do it um, like standing outside of the shower and then sit on the toilet to let it loose. Now is where I'd also like to mention that I set aside about three hours for getting ready. I like to begin by starting with the initial douche, as I call it, where you put some water up in there, push it out. And that's that whole first section. Sometimes I'll do this before I even shower and start getting ready um, because I want it to jump start everything because if my intestines are gonna get stimulated and start overworking, I wanna know early. Three hours is enough time to make sure you can deal with any complications that arise. And then if you're ready early, you can sit and wait and be sure that your douche is going to hold. Sometimes if it's been a couple of hours and you've been clean, you may want to give yourself an amuse douche where you spray up a little bit more water and make sure it's good. You also can just stick some fingers in there and make sure it's all right. IBS is not easy to deal with, even from day to day. There's a lot of discomfort, a lot of sensitivity, but there's also degenerative conditions such as ulcerative colitis and Crohn's where eating the wrong things can actually damage your bowels, so you need to be very gentle with them or else you may need major surgery. There also is celiacs, but that is more about avoiding gluten, but it is still degenerative. So the state of your colon can vary widely from person to person, and what works for you may not work for someone else. You may be watching this video and think, this is way too much work. I never need to do all that. In 10 minutes, a couple of squirts up there and I'm good to go. And that's great for you, but it never will work for me. As I mentioned before, I start shallow, go deeper, go shallow again, and then do something manual, such as a toy or a finger or the inflatable thing I showed earlier. And then repeat as necessary. But what I may not have mentioned is in between each of these rounds, I like to take some time, maybe five or 10 minutes to let my body settle, let any convulsions that are happening calm down. The gut is tied very strongly to the brain and stress and anxiety can really increase the sensitivity and increase the feeling there. When you're stressed, you may not be digesting as well. So sometime, if you have an upset stomach, try sitting down, closing your eyes, putting on some relaxing music and just breathing. Your intestinal distress may lessen. And it's especially important to do this when you're cleaning out. To cap off the method section of this, I'd like to say that all of this is highly variable and it's important to play around with what's good for you. You may want to start a little bit deeper and you'll work your way down. I don't recommend that as much because I don't like to shock the system. Um, I'd also like to mention that it's very good to use around body temperature water, maybe not quite that warm, but warmer water because it's more natural for the body. I do, however, like to finish off with some cold water because that kind of wakes things up. And at, since I take time at the end to make sure everything's all good, if everything gets stimulated by cold water at the end and then something more is pushed through, I'm aware. But if I'm pressed for time, I absolutely will not use cold water, except maybe at the beginning for the same purpose, to jumpstart things and push it along. 
So to cap all this off, you have the diet that you eat around bottoming, the equipment you use to clean yourself out, and the method with which you use that equipment. I know I didn't talk that much about using a shower shot, but that's not really what I do. And this video is more about sharing what I do with you. So do take everything I've said here with a grain of salt. You need to know your body and explore, experiment, see what works for you. And very importantly, if you're unsure about absolutely anything, talk to your doctor, schedule an appointment with a gastroenterologist. Don't be afraid to talk about things that are a little bit gross. You may tell your doctor that you are always stopped up or things move too fast, and you might in fact have a bowel condition that you didn't know about. So if that does happen, it's important to get it tested because if it's something degenerative, you could be harming your body without even knowing it. So for everyone, stay clean, stay tested, and have fun bottoming out there. See ya.